Hey, it's Larry the Table Guy again, and today is my 20th annual 29th birthday. And so for my birthday today, I've gotten a great gift. Today is actually day 15 of total isolation on a rural farm in Louisiana. So, you know, about two weeks ago, I left New Orleans and uh, fingers crossed, here it is two weeks later and I don't have any symptoms. Now I did have a little bit of a scratchy throat, um, I did have a runny nose, itchy eyes, but I also have tree allergies. And so far I'm not, I don't have a thermometer, but I'm not really, you know, feeling any um, fever. Uh, I felt a bit of a chill last night. but. I think I would just may have been cold, but I did get this scratchiness in my throat, like right in the back of the nose, right where the throat starts, and I was like, oh no, but I rinsed that out with um, neti pot, um, seems to be okay, so I'm okay today, and uh, taking my vitamins, um, I have not been within six feet of anyone in over two weeks now, so got another week to go before I'm totally in the clear, but so far so good and uh, I did get an N95 mask late last year uh, and actually some spare cartridges for that and I did that to for my RV that I'm fixing up here so I knew that a great discontinuity was coming I've actually been telling people about it for like the last year or so I knew that something would have to happen to keep Bernie Sanders from being elected president. And so the powers that be would do absolutely whatever it takes, including ending the world, uh, to keep working class people from having any justice in the world. And so, you know, it was obvious to the rest of the world that this was a pandemic of biblical proportions. Um, Trump knew that too. He was briefed in late December and for whatever reason decided to do nothing and decided to tell people, hey, you know, I mean, his own people were selling their stocks, um, and, you know, and buying stocks and, and companies that do, you know, online meetings and those kind of things. I mean, he knew it was coming. They all knew it was coming and yet they let this happen on purpose, so it makes you wonder why that is. Well, I knew that there was a great discontinuity coming. If you uh, read uh, Naomi Klein's book, Shock Doctrine, there's a chapter in there called Disaster Capitalism, which explains it quite well. Never let a catastrophe go to waste. And so when it comes to, you know, Bush knew the intelligence that they were coming to hit us on 9-11 on or thereabouts. He, he knew we were going to get hit, but he wanted us to get hit because, you know, um, the PNAC actually came out with a thing that said we needed a catalyzing event to get people up in arms to go to war with Iraq so we could take those oil fields. Well, I think that there's some similar dynamic here, at, at play here. I mean, obviously we've had other pandemics that we were able to avoid in the past. You know, Ebola, um, SARS-1, MERS. I mean, we've had, you know, H1N1. We were able to contain those and, and uh, contact trace, and we were able to do things that we needed to do to avoid those. So we knew what to do, and we chose not to do those things on purpose makes you wonder why. So knowing that a great death continuity was coming, I didn't know what form it would take. I thought maybe it would be a, uh, a hurricane, and so I was actually trying to get my RVs together in time, uh, you know, after, her, after tornado season, but before hurricane season. And uh, well, it's still before hurricane season, but tornado season is here. Um, and now that I'm here, basically permanently on my own, I'm finally getting the work done. Uh, so this is going to be my arc to perhaps um, survive the coming zombie apocalypse. Uh, I've been homeless many times, and it's always been a great fantasy of mine to actually own something that I can shelter in. Um, obviously, even if you buy a house, you don't really own it, the bank owns it. 
and in times like these, of course, you lose it to foreclosure, so what good is that? Well, you need a, something that you actually own, own, that there's no property tax or any kind of way that uh, the government can take it from you or the bank can take it from you. If you own it with cash, you can do that. Of course, I'm working class poor, so I wasn't able to get a very good one, as you can see. Um, and so I'm in the process of sealing it up and uh, making it my ark. And I've got a lot of work to do, as you can see. Um, every window must come out, every skylight must come out. And I've got it under this nice tent here, which I also own. Like I say, it's impossible to own a house in this country, especially if you're a working class like me with uh, crushing student loan debt. But um, anyway, this is the one that I'm actually living in. And this one also needs work. It's actually 10 years older, but it doesn't have nearly the amount of leaks and rot. But it does have some black mold. And, uh, and especially it has black mold up in here. And I've actually sealed that off here. I've actually repaired this AC. It wasn't working when I got this one. I repaired this AC um, and I sealed it on the roof and uh but it's still got some black mold in there um and i think that that's part of what my um coronas like symptoms were coming from was the allergies to black mold and tree pollen i got to do this skylight today um it's not supposed to rain for a couple of days it's nice cool weather too today so i'm gonna get this stuff done But, uh, I'm out here in the country, and uh, I go down that way there to uh, do my morning run. They say that with this uh, coronavirus, you got to stay, you have to exercise. You have to exercise because you have to expel your lungs, you have to expand your lungs, and even if you're infected, it'll be in your throat. And if you can keep it out of your lungs, it'll just be like a cold. Once it gets into your lungs, you get viral pneumonia. Let me go back in here where it's not quite so noisy. You can see every door and every window is out of this thing. But, uh, I've, uh, I'm rebuilding this entire wall from scratch. But in any event, if you can, the way this virus works is it'll uh, get into your lungs, um, it reproduces in your throat, and then you breathe it into your lungs. And then um, if you can, and then when you breathe it out, that's how it spreads. So it, it's multiplying in your lungs in your top of your bronchial, in your throat, and then you breathe it out. And so every time, if you, if you keep your lungs expanded, if you do those breathing exercises where you hold your breath as much air as you can for 10 seconds at a time, and especially if you can go running in an area that's not polluted or not near anyone else, uh, then you can expel that virus which is what it wants to do. It wants to get out of your body and get into another body. But the more of it you can get out of you, the less of a viral load that you'll have and the, the milder your um, symptoms will be. The, uh, one of the things is they say even the people who are hospitalized for this, they don't let them lie in bed. Even as painful as it is, they make them get up and walk around and try to expel this stuff to lo lower their viral load. But uh, anyway... 49 years old today, and I guess my gift is that I'm alive. Thank you all for the birthday wishes, and stay well.